Hey everybody, Richard Pie Guy here. Today we're going to do a brief demo and review of the Raspad 3 Raspberry Pi tablet. So what this does is it actually transforms your Raspberry Pi 4 into a tablet. You can run Raspberry Pi's operating system on there with the touchscreen, keyboard, and mouse, or you can run RetroPie. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a closer look at the functions and features of the Raspad 3. Then we're also going to test it with the Raspad operating system, which is basically the same thing as the Raspberry Pi operating system followed by RetroPie. So we're gonna jump into a couple different gameplay demos and show you exactly what the performance is like on here. And again, all the functions and features. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the Raspad 3's functions and features here. So obviously I have my RetroPie image already booted up here on the screen. Just wanna show off the screen here. It is a super high quality 10 inch IPS screen. Obviously this is a video of a uh, video screen here. So you do lose some of the quality in the video, but Take my word for it, this is a super high quality screen. Uh, really nice, clear and crisp picture. And I think even in the video of, video of a video screen, it actually does show just how sharp and, and clear everything is here. So moving on, I'm gonna go to the right hand side here first. Over here, we have a micro SD card slot. Really nice micro SD card slot here because it has that little um, clicking function to it. So you insert the card in, push it, and it clicks into place. So there's no real risk of you know, it, it becoming loose and popping out or anything like that, not unless you were to push in here and, um, you know, obviously disengage the uh, locking function. So I have my image already booted up on here, so I'm not going to eject that for you today just because that would be a um, terrible way to eject the card while it's already up and running. But um, really, really nice there. I do like that. It's not just your typical slide in and slide out micro SD card slot, which we have on the regular Raspberry Pi 4. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but with those slots that don't actually lock the card in place, it's definitely easy for it to loosen up and, um, you know, become dislodged. So moving on, we have our power button right here. We have, obviously you just hold this down three seconds to power this on, but not a whole lot there. We have our volume control here, our light control here, and then this is our battery indicator. So one means that the battery is getting low, two would mean that you're about midway through on your battery life, and then three lights would be fully charged. Um, and then this is just our power indicator light there. So going over to the other side, this is where we find all of our ports. So we have our ethernet port right here. We have three USB three ports. So we do lose one USB because of regular Raspberry Pi has four, this only has three. We have a full size HDMI port right here. So you can plug in a HDMI cable right here, take the other end of it, stick it into your monitor or TV and take your uh, tablet here and bring the picture right up onto your big screen. And then we also have our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack here, and this is going to be our power supply. So when we need to charge our battery, you just plug in your power supply cable here, other end goes into the outlet on your wall, and you're able to charge this up. So that's pretty much it in terms of all the different functions and features of the Raspad 3. So now we're gonna get in here, I'm gonna show you how RetroPie performs on here, how everything's laid out and works, and I'm also gonna show you the Raspad operating system. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna to do today on the Raspad 3 is we're gonna take a look at the Raspad operating system. So this is what Raspad recommends that we use. And I will say this operating system is pretty much identical to the Raspberry Pi OS. So I can't say that I would recommend the Raspad operating system over the regular Raspberry Pi operating system because again, they are pretty much identical. They have the same functions and features. So there's really no advantage to using this over the Raspberry Pi OS. So I will take a look here. We have pretty much the same layout here. Um, it actually looks a little bit different here, but if we click this icon up here, you can see we come back to our regular desktop and everything about this is exactly the same as the Raspberry Pi operating system. Although we do have this little uh, keyboard that populates up here, we can add that on the regular Raspberry Pi operating system too. But since this is geared towards this being used on the tablet sort of setup here, it's already integrated in. So that is really nice and convenient. We don't have to go in and add the additional software. It's already built in on here. So I will give it um, you know, praise there. But going in over here on the left-hand side, our menu is pretty much exactly the same. We have home, programming, education, office, internet, sound and video, graphics, games, accessories, help, preferences, run. And then at the bottom here, we have our power button to power this off um, or to reboot it. And we have some settings there. So again, pretty much exactly the same. We even have LibreOffice in here um, and all the other Libre uh, softwares. So up here, if we go back to our desktop, we have our browser, all our files, and then we have our terminal. 
same sort of deal over here, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, sound, uh, time, and all of that. All right, so I'm actually not gonna waste any more time going into the Raspad operating system. If you're familiar with the Raspberry Pi OS, this is exactly the same sort of deal. What I'm most excited about is exploring how RetroPie performs on the Raspad 3. So what I'm gonna do is power this down, swap out my micro SD card, put my RetroPie micro SD card in here, and we'll see how RetroPie runs. All right, so I just booted this up with my RetroPie game collection card inserted into the micro SD card slot. So I'm going to actually take my wireless PlayStation style controller here, insert my receiver into the USB port on the side of my RasPad, and I'm going to jump into the setup and mapping process here. So I'm power this on, hold down a button on my controller here, and I'm just going to map this real quick. And just like that, it should be fully mapped and set up here. So we'll test this out. And it looks like I am able to navigate through my different collections here. So in order to test this out, let's jump into a game and, and see how everything performs on here. Make sure everything is good with the emulation. So I have a PlayStation style controller. So let me jump into PlayStation. And let me jump into a game that's super easy to get into. Let's do Tekken 3. Check the volume on here. Volume seems to be pretty good. Really smooth, works perfectly well on here. No lags, no issues at all, no sputtering. PlayStation is one of the more advanced collections on here. It usually run, runs really nicely, but um, you know, it, you're usually able to tell if there's any issues right away. All right, cool. So I'm gonna jump out of here, hit my hotkey enable, and let's just test out one other collection. So let me go into, N64 is always a tough one. Um, let me jump into Mario Kart. I think I can do that without tweaking the um, mapping for this controller, since this really isn't the controller you would typically use for N64 games, but I think we'll be all right. Let's see. So this will be the ultimate test, just to make sure. I know that's a Raspberry Pi 4 in here, but I definitely want to test it out, make sure that nothing gets altered by, you know, all those modifications on the regular board in the RasPad. All right, let's see. No issues at all. Not seeing any lags or glitches of any kind on here.
All right, so let me jump out of that. Everything worked perfectly on here with RetroPie, so I definitely think this is an awesome setup. All right, so we did jump in here, took a closer look at the different functions and features of the RazPad 3. We jumped into the RazPad operating system, which behaves and runs exactly like the Raspberry Pi operating system. So we got to get a feel for how everything functions within there. Uh, we got a good feel for the touchscreen capabilities of both the mouse and keyboard. So I didn't spend too much time in there though. I was most excited about jumping into emulation and testing out RetroPie on here. I wanna make sure that everything falls in line with how it would on a regular Raspberry Pi 4. Obviously that's what's powering this, but sometimes with modifications that obviously are transforming the Raspberry Pi into something else. In this case, it's transforming it into a tablet. Sometimes we do lose some things along the way, some things um, you know, just don't perform the same way. So I'm happy to report everything stays the exact same way that it does in a regular RetroPie system on a regular Raspberry Pi 4. So everything works super well. I jumped into a bunch of different games in this video. I kept it short, just jumped into two, but I did test out Mario Kart 64. So if you are familiar with emulation, you know that N64 is one of those collections that's, you know, a little tricky to emulate. So jumped into Mario Kart 64, tested it out, ran flawlessly. So if, if uh, N64 games work really well on here, you're in good shape. So I absolutely love the RazPad 3. I have to say that everything about it, really, really nicely made. The functions, the features, everything is really nice on here, but it definitely changes the experience because it takes that RetroPie experience, which is pretty much been used on, you know, arcade systems like I have behind me or home console sort of setups with a TV or monitor, you know, playing in a living room or a desk or, you know, whatever the case may be. But this is a game changer. This means that we can take RetroPie on the go with us, which we haven't been able to do other than in a Pi Boy DMG or a GPI case. This is definitely very different because it is that tablet setup. So we have a 10 inch IPS screen here, just changes the experience immensely. So um, what's awesome about this is we can use wired gamepad controllers with the three USB three ports on the side. We can put in here uh, Bluetooth gamepad controllers, pair them up exactly the same way that we would on a regular um, Raspberry Pi 4. So you get pretty much everything that you had previously with a Raspberry Pi 4 setup, but now you get it in a tablet form. So this can go on the go. You can play this on a plane. You can play this in a car, um, you know, anywhere in your house, where, whatever you want to do. So I really love this. I think it's really great. I will mention that we do have an HDMI port on the side here. So theoretically we could take a full regular size HDMI cable, run it from here to our TV or monitor and play along, you know, with our system here, but have it mirrored up onto our big screen, you know, whether it's TV or monitor. But I will say that I didn't find the performance of that to be all that good. I found that it lagged a little bit, it had intermittent connections, and I know it wasn't the cable because it's the cable I use on all my different devices. So I do think that, um, you know, I made sure all my connections inside are good. So I, I just didn't find the performance of that function of this to be all that great in my opinion. But um, I think the majority of people aren't going to be using it that way anyways, because it really doesn't make sense to use this as your Raspberry Pi console, you know, because you'd have dual screens going at the same time we already have the ability to play Raspberry Pi, you know, direct to a TV or monitor as it is. So to get this at a higher price point, just to end up doing that really doesn't make much sense. I think the majority of people are gonna use this exactly as it's meant to be used, which is as a tablet. So uh, in regards to it being used as a tablet and a portable gaming system, I think it's just a home run across the board. Everything about it's awesome, obviously aside from um, the HDMI output, not being great in my opinion. Other than that though, Everything is really nicely put together here. Obviously you have to do some of the work assembling this and installing the Raspberry Pi 4. I do have a separate video tutorial on how to do that exactly. There are some great instructions, uh, you know, that come along with this, but if you're a visual person like I am, you know, I can read instructions all day long, but there's nothing like seeing it done. If you're looking for that video, check the uh, description below. I'll put a direct link in there for you, but that's really gonna do it for today. I'm gonna to put a direct link um, to pick one of these up. If you're interested in picking up one of these, just drop down in the description below. Click the direct link on there. It'll take you over to Amazon. You can get this in, I think, two days with Amazon Prime. So um, if you're interested in picking that up, again, link in the description below. But that's gonna do it for today. This is definitely a home run. Awesome, awesome, awesome setup here. Highly recommend it to anybody looking for that portable RetroPie um, tablet sort of feel and setup. So again, that's gonna do it for today. 
If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button for me. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Do a whole bunch of different videos based around retro gaming, product reviews, gameplay demos, tutorials, just a little bit of everything on here. And of course, check us out online, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.